Each country has its own way of doing things, and France is no exception. I've now lived here uh, since about 2012, and I've had a lot of time to observe how French people live and just their culture and what life is like in France. So in this video, we're going to jump right into five things that make a lot more sense in France than they do in the US. Okay, first, bonjour tout le monde, happy new year, bonne année. And if you're new to my channel here at We in France, I'm Diane, and I'm the American behind weinfrance.com. So thank you for being here first and foremost. And with that, we're gonna get into number one, which is the metric system. Now, before moving to France, the system we've used in the US for hundreds of years, it made sense to me. It's what I was used to, it's what I grew up with. Now, I believe it's officially called the US customary system, but it's commonly referred to as the imperial system, so we'll go with that. I knew all the measurements just like the back of my hand. You know, like how many feet are in a mile, how many teaspoons are in a tablespoon, and honestly, regarding the mile, where the heck did 5,280 feet come from? I mean, it's so random, right? But after moving to France, I've become a metric system convert. It makes so much more sense to have everything in multiples of 10, you know, 100 centimeters in a meter, 1,000 in meters in a kilometer. It makes a lot of sense. And our US system is utterly confusing to foreigners and it honestly took me moving to France to realize that maybe there's a more logical way. And if you're wondering why the US uh, doesn't switch over to the metric system like the vast majority of the world, I believe the main reason is because of the time and the money it would take. Britannica.com explains that back during the Industrial Revolution, expensive manufacturing plants where many Americans worked and where these consumer products came from, because the imperial system was what was used then and all their equipment for these workers in the factories was developed with that imperial unit of measurement, it's how the workers were trained. So whenever Congress then discusses switching over to the metric system, that's vetoed because it would just take too much money, too much training, and just big business didn't want to go through the expensive and long process of, uh, of redoing everything, the entire infrastructure, and making it into the metric system. All that said, I personally feel that the more you use the metric system, the more you'll realize how many positives it has going for it. Just saying, and um, how unnecessarily complicated our US system can be. Like, let's just take baking, for example, right? You want to make a cake. Having exact measurements is a must for baking, you know, unless you want a really bad cake. So when you measure ingredients in cups, well, your cup can be different than my cup. But if you measure it in grams, the metric system, by weight, it's way more precise because 100 grams is always going to be 100 grams. You know, it's just the weight. But like I said, a cup, well, depending on the measuring cup and if you pack in the flour or if you, if you level it off correctly, there's going to be fluctuation and that's going to affect your cookies or your cake, rarely in a good way. Number two, there's no electoral college, or if you say electoral, electoral, same difference. I did a whole video about what the French find strange about the US election process, so check that out. And at the top of the list is the electoral college. Now, in France, it's the popular vote that wins every time. So there are two rounds of voting for the president, and the person with the highest number of votes, that's who wins. It's a democratic process. The votes actually count, and it's the votes that determine who will become the next president. So for me, the Electoral College, it seems outdated, definitely had questionable origins, and it doesn't make sense, I don't feel, much for the current time at all. The current 2023 and beyond, I don't know if we need it anymore. And I understand that it makes small states matter. It would take an amendment to the Constitution to abolish the Electoral College, so I don't know if it's ever gonna happen. But you know, when you break it down, the election process makes a lot of sense in France. Look it up. Okay, number three, five weeks, yes, five, of paid vacation. Now, the French mentality regarding work is that they work to live and not the other way around. You know, if you're a full-time employee in France, I've talked about this at length, the law says you get five weeks of paid vacation per year. And you're really encouraged to use those five weeks. End of story. And you know what's even better? All those public holidays. You know, you get off for all of those as well. And I'm not just talking about Christmas or, or New Year's and that sort of thing. In May alone, this year, 2023, there are four that will fall on a weekday, you know? And to me, that says, hello, long weekend. And in fact, the French, they actually refer to those long weekends as faire le pont. It literally means making a bridge, but it, it literally means making a bridge, but it's about taking a long weekend. So if that holiday falls on a Thursday, for example, you take your Friday off too, and you get that four day weekend. 
faire le pont, make the bridge. Some employees actually get more than five weeks of paid vacation, like my husband Tom. He's a civil servant, un fonctionnaire. That's just all to say vacation in France is not a joke, so much so that the French language actually has a word for those who take vacation in July and August. And I've mentioned it before, for July it's le juilletiste, and for August it's les haussiens. And that just shows you how important vacation is in French culture. Moving on to number four, tax is already included in the prices you see. Now, I love when things are simple. When you're shopping in France, it doesn't get much simpler than seeing the price on the label or the sticker and having that be the total price you pay at the register. Now, you'll see the VAT, the value added tax on consumer goods and services, it's already included in the price on the sticker. And on average, I believe it's about 21% uh, across the board in the EU. So there's no confusion when it comes to paying for things in France and, and in Europe in general, because that tax, it's already factored into the price on that garment or the product. So if you go into a store, you see a t-shirt is 25 euros, you go up to the cash register and you're gonna pay 25 euros. It's simple, there's no additional sales tax, it doesn't depend on what area of France you're in, nothing like that. And just to note, in France, you'll see the VAT on the receipt as the TVA, the TVA, that's the, uh, the tax sur la valeur ajoutée. So it's not VAT in French, it's TVA, tax sur la valeur ajoutée. Okay, number five, Health insurance is not tied to your employment. So in France, your healthcare coverage is not linked to your employer, your employment, like it usually is in the US. So if you lose or you quit your job in France, you don't lose your health coverage for yourself or for your family, you know, and you're not forced to get the equivalent of what a lot of people are forced to get in the US, that expensive COBRA plan. Everyone in France, citizens and permanent residents like myself, we have healthcare coverage. We pay into the system. We pay taxes, we pay social charges, yes, they're high, but we also don't go bankrupt if we get in an accident. And this is one of my favorite parts of living in France. I talk about it a lot. Now, of course, there are pros and cons to every system on earth. France is far from perfect. It's not an exception to that, but it is a country that takes care of its people's health. That's a win in my book. Now, one major difference is that in France, doctor's offices, they have prices clearly posted in the waiting room on a piece of paper. So there's no guessing as to what the price of a consult or, or a test is going to be. And I, I like that. It takes the, the guesswork out of things. And just a quick note, this video isn't about telling you what country's better or worse across the board. It's not a critique of the US, so please don't take it that way. No one place is inherently better than another place. I just enjoy personally pointing out the differences. You guys love hearing about them and it's all in an effort so you can be more prepared for your trip to France and learn how things are done here. So speaking of that, if you want to learn even more about France and French culture, I'd love it if you checked out my ebook linked below. Uh, it looks like this and it's titled 75 Beginner France Travel Tips for a Standout Trip and it has um, all kinds of tips about money, uh, the language, uh, tips for going out to eat and that sort of thing, all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, with that, check it out. I want to turn it over to you now. Let me know down below in the comments what things you personally find make more sense to you um, in France versus the US. And if you like this kind of content and you want to see more like this, maybe the reverse, things that make more sense in the US, let me know down below. I'm gonna leave it here for today. I'll see you back here on We in France soon. Salut!